11월 2일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경 통독 오늘 말씀은 11기하 15장 디도서 1장 호세아서 8장 10편 123편부터 125편까지의 말씀입니다. November 2nd, 2nd Kings 15. Uzziah began to rule as king over Judah. It was in the 27th year that Jeroboam was king of Israel. Uzziah was the son of Amaziah. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 52 years. His mother's name was Jechaliah. She was from Jerusalem. Uzziah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. But the high places weren't removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. The Lord caused King Uzziah to suffer from a skin disease until the day he died. He lived in a separate house. His son Jotham was in charge of the palace. Jotham ruled over the people of the land. The other events of the rule of Uzziah are written down. Everything he did is written in the official records of the kings of Judah. Uzziah joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried near them in the city of David. Uzziah's son Jotham became the next king after him. Zechariah became king of Israel in Samaria. It was in the 38th year that Uzziah was king of Judah. Zechariah ruled for six months. He was the son of Jeroboam, the son of Jehoash. Zechariah did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did what the kings of Israel before him had done. He didn't turn away from the sins Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, had committed. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit those same sins. Shalom made evil plans against Zechariah. He attacked Zechariah in front of the people and killed him. Then he became the next king after him. Shalom was the son of Jabesh. The other events of the rule of Zechariah are written down. They are written in the official records of the kings of Israel. What happened to Zechariah is what the Lord said would happen. He had spoken that message to Jehu. The Lord had said, Your sons after you will sit on the throne of Israel. They will rule until the time of your children's grandchildren. 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 30, Shalom became king of Israel. It was in the 39th year that Uzziah was king of Judah. Shalom ruled in Samaria for one month. He was the son of Jabesh. Menahem went from Terza up to Samaria. There he attacked Shalom, the son of Jabesh. Menahem killed him and became the next king after him. Menahem was the son of Gadi. The other events of Shalom's rule are written down. The evil things he planned are written down. All these things are written in the official records of the kings of Israel. At that time Menahem started out from Terza and attacked Tifsa. He attacked everyone in the city and the area around it. That's because they refused to open their gates for him. He destroyed Tifsa. He ripped open all their pregnant women. Menahem became king of Israel. It was in the 39th year that Uzziah was king of Judah. Menahem ruled in Samaria for 10 years. He was the son of Gadi. Menahem did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. During his entire rule he didn't turn away from the sins Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, had committed. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit those same sins. Then tiglath Pileser marched into the land of Israel. He was king of Assyria. Menahem gave him 38 tons of silver to get his help. He wanted to make his control over the kingdom stronger. Menahem forced Israel to give him that money. Every wealthy person had to give him 20 ounces of silver. All of it went to the king of Assyria. So he pulled his troops back. He didn't stay in the land anymore. 
The other events of the rule of Menahem are written down. Everything he did is written in the official records of the kings of Israel. Menahem joined the members of his family who had already died. Menahem's son Pekahiah became the next king after him. Pekahiah became king of Israel in Samaria. It was in the fiftieth year that Isaiah was king of Judah. Pekahiah ruled for two years. He was the son of Menahem. Pekahiah did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't turn away from the sins Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, had committed. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit those same sins. One of Pekahiah's chief officers was Pekah. He was the son of Remaliah. Pekah made evil plans against Pekahiah. He took fifty men from Gilead with him and killed Pekahiah. Pekah also killed Argob and Aria. He killed all of them in the safest place in the royal palace at Samaria. So Pekah killed Pekahiah. He became the next king after him. The other events of the rule of Pekahiah are written down. Everything he did is written in the official records of the kings of Israel. Pekah became king of Israel in Samaria. It was in the fifty-second year that Isaiah was king of Judah. Pekah ruled for twenty years. He was the son of Remaliah. Pekah did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't turn away from the sins Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, had committed. Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit those same sins. During the rule of Pekah, the king of Israel, Tiglath Pileser marched into the land again. He was king of Assyria. He captured the towns of Ijon, Abel Beth Maka, Genoa, Kadesh and Hazor. He also captured the lands of Gilead and Galilee. That included the whole territory of Naphtali. He took the people away from their own land. He sent them off to Assyria. Then Hoshea made evil plans against Pekah, the son of Remaliah. Hoshea was the son of Elah. Hoshea attacked Pekah and killed him. Then Hoshea became the next king after him. It was in the twentieth year of the rule of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. The other events of the rule of Pekah are written down. Everything he did is written in the official records of the kings of Israel. Jotham began to rule as king over Judah. It was in the second year that Pekah was king of Israel. He was the son of Remaliah. Jotham was the son of Uzziah. Jotham was twenty-five years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for sixteen years. His mother's name was Jerisha. She was the daughter of Zadok. Jotham did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzziah had done. But the high places weren't removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the Lord's temple. The other events of the rule of Jotham are written down. Everything he did is written in the official records of the kings of Judah. In those days the Lord began to send Rezin and Pekah against Judah. Rezin was king of Aram. Pekah was the son of Remaliah. Jotham joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in the family tomb in the city of King David. Jotham's son Ahaz became the next king after him. Titus chapter 1 I, Paul, am writing this letter. I serve God, and I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. God sent me to help his chosen people believe in Christ more and more. God sent me to help them understand even more the truth that leads to godly living. That belief and understanding led to the hope of eternal life. Before time began, God promised to give that life. And he does not lie. Now, at just the right time, he has made his promise clear. He did this through the preaching that he trusted me with. God our Savior has commanded all these things. Titus, I am sending you this letter. 
You are my true son in the faith we share. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior give you grace and peace. I left you on the island of Crete. I did this because there were some things that hadn't been finished. I wanted you to put them in order. I also wanted you to appoint elders in every town. I told you how to do it. An elder must be without blame. He must be faithful to his wife. His children must be believers. They must not give anyone a reason to say that they are wild and don't obey. A church leader takes care of God's family. That's why he must be without blame. He must not look after only his own interests. He must not get angry easily. He must not get drunk. He must not push people around. He must not try to get money by cheating people. Instead, a church leader must welcome people into his home. He must love what is good. He must control his mind and feelings. He must do what is right. He must be holy. He must control the desires of his body. The message as it has been taught can be trusted. He must hold firmly to it. Then he will be able to use true teaching to comfort others and build them up. He will be able to prove that people who oppose it are wrong. Many people refuse to obey God. All they do is talk about things that mean nothing. They try to fool others. No one does these things more than the circumcision group. They must be stopped. They are making trouble for entire families. They do this by teaching things they shouldn't. They do these things to cheat people. One of Crete's own prophets has a saying. He says, people from Crete are always liars. They are evil beasts. They don't want to work. They live only to eat. This saying is true. So give a strong warning to people who refuse to obey God. Then they will understand the faith correctly. Then they will pay no attention to Jewish stories that aren't true. They won't listen to the mere human commands of people who turn away from the truth. To people who are pure, all things are pure. But to those who have twisted minds and don't believe, nothing is pure. In fact, their minds and their sense of what is right and wrong are twisted. They claim to know God. But their actions show they don't know Him. They are hated by God. They refuse to obey Him. They aren't fit to do anything good. Hosea chapter 8 The Lord said to me, Put a trumpet to your lips. Give a warning to my people. Assyria is like an eagle. It is ready to attack my land. My people have broken the covenant I made with them. They have refused to obey my law. Israel shouts to me, We recognize you as our God. But they have turned away from what is good. So an enemy will chase them. My people appoint kings one do not want. They choose princes without my permission. They use their silver and gold to make statues of gods. That is how they destroy themselves. The Lord says, People of Samaria, throw out your god that looks like a calf. I am very angry with them. How long will it be until they are able to remain faithful to me? Their calf is not God. A skilled worker from Israel made it. But that calf of Samaria will be broken to pieces. The Lord says, Worshipping other gods is like worshipping the wind. It is like planting worthless seeds. Assyria is like a windstorm. That is all my people will harvest. There are no heads of grain on the stems that will come up. So they will not produce any flour. Even if they did produce grain, the Assyrians would eat all of it up. So the people of Israel are swallowed up. Now they are among the nations like something no one wants. They have gone up to Assyria for help. They are like a wild donkey that wanders around by itself. Ephraim's people have sold themselves to their Assyrian lovers. They have sold themselves to the nations to get their help. 
but now I will gather them together. They will get weaker and weaker. The mighty kings of Assyria will crush them. Ephraim built many altars where they sacrificed sin offerings to other gods. So their altars have become places where they commit sin. In my law I wrote down many things for their good. But they considered those things as something strange. They offer sacrifices as gifts to me. They eat the meat of the animals they bring. But the Lord is not pleased with any of this. He will remember the evil things they have done. He will punish them for their sins. And they will return to Egypt. Israel has forgotten the God who made them. They have built palaces for themselves. Judah has built forts in many towns. But I will send down fire on their cities. It will burn up their forts. Psalms 123, 124, 125 Psalm chapter 123 A song for those who go up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. I look up and pray to you. Your throne is in heaven. Slaves depend on their masters. A female slave depends on the woman she works for. In the same way, we depend on the Lord our God. We wait for him to have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, because people haven't stopped making fun of us. We have had to put up with a lot from those who are proud. They were always laughing at us. Psalm chapter 124 A song for those who go up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. A Psalm of David Here is what Israel should say. Suppose the Lord had not been on our side. Suppose the Lord had not been on our side when our enemies attacked us. Suppose he had not been on our side when their burning anger blazed out against us. Then they would have swallowed us alive. They would have been like a flood that drowned us. They would have swept over us like a rushing river. They would have washed us away like a swollen stream. Give praise to the Lord. He has not let our enemies chew us up. We have escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help comes from the Lord. He is the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm chapter 125 A song for those who go up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They will always be secure. They will last forever. Like the mountains around Jerusalem, the Lord is all around his people both now and forever. Evil people will not always rule the land the Lord gave to those who do right. If they did, those who do right might do what is evil. Lord, do good to those who are good. Do good to those whose hearts are honest. But the Lord will drive out those who have taken crooked paths. He will drive them out with those who do evil things. May Israel enjoy peace.